So I bought those clubs maybe when I was 24, so seven years ago. Yeah. And I just went to an American golf and just picked up a pair that I like the look of. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they seem pretty standard, I think, for a beginner. I mean, it's of a gen generation when Loft started getting stronger and stronger on game improvement clubs. So you've got 26 degree of Loft on the six iron here. Um, the lie appears to be relatively upright, equivalent to about a degree and a half up. Okay. The lie angle being the angle between I'll get the club out. That angle there. So if that was resting flat on the ground, yeah. that's the ground, it's that angle there. Okay, that's the great. lie angle. Um, but, but in terms of uh, the length, it's a standard length, 26 degree loft as I stated. A little bit more upright. Um, I don't know if you had a discussion when, when, it, when you bought these, was there any discussion of Not the specification of it? No. I literally just took one club from like three or four sets out on the range yeah. and went with whatever one felt best. Yeah. I'm a hockey player, All right. so I kind of just went with how I pick hockey clubs, or hockey clubs, hockey sticks, where I just pick the one that felt best and then just off we go, which yeah, obviously. Sure. Okay. I'll just, uh, like I said, uh, get a feeling. If you want to use the yellow balls there, Will, yeah. use the yellow balls just to warm up with. Cool. Grab like a seven or an eight iron yeah. and from the, the mat by the white tee, just hit some warm up shots, Just get yourself here, yeah? moving, yeah. Mark, one of the questions that I did have for today as well sure. is, I don't know what a good golf ball is for me to use. Along the way, I can make a recommend, you know, one or two balls that would yeah. be a good fit for you. A lot of it is subjective in field terms. Okay. A premium ball is always going to win on the basis that it spins better with the shorter clubs, the wedges, for instance, on partial shots. Um, the one... The one type of ball construction that I'm always going to recommend is if it's a minimum three piece with a urethane coat yeah. because they're the things that guarantee a bit more performance. Okay. Um, beyond that, there's different compressions. Um, they can vary in the way they spin a little bit on a full shot. You might get a softer ball that's very long in the irons but lose a bit of ball speed with the driver but it's offset with a low spin. Okay. So you get the roll side of it, yeah? Um, there's always a little bit of a trade-off in that respect. So you, when, you, when you see sort of stats on ball numbers, you find that the firmer balls are faster, mm. softer balls are a little bit slower, mm -hmm. but the, the softer balls at a, a lower speed, say on a six iron, might actually go further because of the spin that it creates, makes it a slightly hotter flight. Okay. But, but there's, what, a I mean, lot, it's complicated. there's a lot of balls out there, but you can sort of get a feel for what someone's requirements are. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it depends on budget as well. You know, you can get a, 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 probably a dozen three-piece urethane balls. If you shop around, say, for £30 a dozen, uh, it's like a tour response, tailor-made, it's a decent ball. Mm -hmm. Bridgestone make a very good range, um, not quite as expensive as Pro V1 Titleists, um, but they can vary anywhere. That sort of, I would steer clear of anything that was like a what's known as a surly or plastic coat mm -hmm. that doesn't spin particularly well on the shorter clubs. Okay. They're the ones that you sort of want to avoid. Keep it to a urethane coat. That's the one that's a little bit more of a guarantee of performance. Three okay. piece minimum. Um, layers or parts um, and anywhere between f f say 
30 pounds to 50 pounds is your range it's where your budget is as well yeah perfect yeah. that works yeah I found a uh, TP5X maybe three or four rounds ago that was brand new and I haven't lost it yet. I think that's a good sign. That's a four piece, con no, it's a five piece construction, sorry. Okay. Um, hence the reason TP5. Um, that's a firm ball. So in, in spin terms, it's one of the highest spinning balls okay. as a premium ball. Firm, fast, it's a sort of ball that a pro would gravitate to because <laughs> um, they can compress it and get more out of it on a higher speed. Okay. Um, and they also want it for its short game properties because it spins well <coughs> in anything inside 100 yards. It's a good spin ball. So, but, you know, in field terms, it's quite a firm feeling in, in a, you know, if you add a spectrum of compressions on balls, it's more that upper end in, okay. in compression. So when you think you're ready, what we'll do is get some test numbers with the six iron. Okay. See how the current six iron is performing. Um, have a discussion where it can potentially be improved and we'll just start building some stuff to compare. Nice that leisurely good. swing, by the way. Pardon? Lovely leisurely swing. <laughs> Thank you. Very, well, very smooth rhythm to it. I think when I try and swing too fast, that's when I have problems. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's really, really, doesn't look like a lot can go wrong with that. <laughs> Trust me, a lot can go wrong. Well, it shouldn't. But I'm, I'm probably feeling ready. Looking at the dynamics, it looks good. Um, right, so we get the yellow ones out of the way. There's a couple of Pro V ones. We always tend to use tight. This is our default ball for testing, only on the basis that this is an RCT or it's a special version that's got refractive properties that allows it to see the spin on yeah. track now. Cool, um, to me. So As I say, I have no preference on balls whatsoever. But certainly, it's, it, it, you know where you are with it because it's incredibly consistent and it's that one of, it's very transparent in the numbers. Okay. It's not going to, you use a ball that's a bit quirky and it's, it can have a little impact, a little bit, put of a, a bit of a mask over the numbers. Okay. Whereas the Pro one, you know where you are. Love it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, there's your six. In terms of target line, yeah, it's as you see it on the screen. Okay, lovely. We'll fire off half a dozen or so shots, get a feel for the performance and have a discussion on that. So what I'm going to do, just get you, you can come a little bit more towards me, but a little bit close to that tee. You were just in range to get all the information, but I, I do need the club information along as the ball. That's perfect. Okay. It should yeah, perfect. be fine there. Love it. Um, I always like to see the club information as well as the ball information because it tells me where the technique is as well. So. Or you let me know where it's perfect and I'll go there. That's, that should be good there. Perfect. <laughs> Never mind.
And that's the other way, I think. No, it's uh, just a little right. bit heavy more than anything else. The, the path line, the face line, all looks quite neutral there. It's just a little bit ground before ball. Contact, therefore, was a little bit high on the head. That sounded nice. Yeah. That one felt good. Oh, maybe not. No, just face angle. The contact itself was very central. Just um, in terms of where your, your path was one degree out to win, so very neutral. Okay. But the face was nine degree open to that path. Wow. <laughs> so the contact was very, very good. Just spot by an open face on that one. Oh dear. Right. Spraying them. Don't worry. <laughs> Come on. Gotta stay down. I don't think this is my irons fault. It's what, sorry? I don't think this is the fault of my irons. This is just going everywhere. Just hit goal shots, don't try and do anything different. Just hit, just relax and hit goal shots. That's it? Yeah. One more. Good look. Square that up one. Square that one quite nicely. Looked always looked neutral on my eye that one. Yeah. Still a little bit heavy. Um, you could tell from the spin rate it was just a little bit more ground and ball same time. Lost a little bit of spin on that shot. So it came out of the air a little bit early. See that spin there is a very relatively low spin for six iron. Here, even that one was a little bit low. So what you would say across the board, but we can ignore those. Yeah. Yeah. I don't normally do that either. Nervous. See the spin element when it's open face, mind you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that tells us a bit more of a story about where you're at. Um, I, would, I would generally say whatever I'd want to do, it'd be nice just to see a little bit more, a little bit more strike quality. Um, only that if you look at where your club speed is there, you don't on face value, at no point have you generated a ball speed that I would see as a, a good ball speed. Yeah, um, the contact points, even on the better ones, a little bit high on the head. Okay. If we can get that a bit more central, that's really good news. If you look at the math, the general rule of thumb, if you took, let's say, took 40% of that, let's round it out to a 32, 32 on top, uh, 110, 110 is a, what I see as a ball speed that represents a good ball speed for you. Okay. Um, that would be more on the upper level. But that, coupled with a good flight with a little bit more spin, that would be a serious change in performance. Okay. Yeah? Um, yeah, so, so it's just obviously changing, to, uh, changing the strike point, finding something that you really do get a good strike with. Get that ball speed up. Um, the spin will get better for being better struck. Central yeah. hit, clean ball first. The spin will change regardless. 
Um, I don't think you necessarily need anything, let's say, souped up in loft, you know, very strong loft. You, what you need is, is just good face performance with a level of forgiveness, but a relatively conservative design that, that's quite future proof. That's moved, you know, that you can improve into and enjoy as your yes, technique and, and method gets better. The lofts that are on a, on a good player's clubs, this is notion of, oh, well, they use strong lofts. Well, actually, it's the reverse. All the high handicappers are all using stronger lofts than all the players on tour. Okay. That what they're using is always a more conservative set of lofts because their dynamics, they're strong dynamically. They've got the downward strike. They'll, they'll launch a six iron, say 15 degrees with, with anywhere between five and a half, six thousand of, of, of spin. Yeah? That's a lot, isn't it? It's slightly different, yeah? Yeah. So, but they'll, they'll, they'll have an average loft on, a, on the tour of, say, 30 degrees on a six iron. Well, I've measured yours at 26. Okay. But that's a lot of where the game improvement clubs are. A lot of people, they're weak dynamically. If they're out to in as a movement, they're adding loft because mm -hmm. they need an open face to that path. So therefore they're creating more dynamic loft again. So you can see how these manufacturers, they sort of look at the, 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 the more the norm, the more the average golfer, and how these specs have got stronger. And, and distance sells when you yeah. go into a, a, the average yeah, fitting yeah. center. And it's not a six iron, it's a seven iron. You've got then a license to, to have a stronger loft on a club that's easy to hit because the shaft's shorter and the base loft, say it, say it was a seven iron with 30 degree of loft. Well, oh, look how far that seven iron's going. It sells, distant sells. Yeah. So there's a number of things going on in the industry and, and also catering for certain tendencies in the swing terms. I mean, I'm less worried about distance. It's small. I just want to be able to hit it. Well, I think the other thing is I want to feel like when I hold these clubs now, I look down on them and I just think like, I, can't, I, I don't feel interested in hitting this club. Does that make sense as well? Yeah, I, I had a guy just before you who wasn't of the same playing level as, as you are, but he insisted on seeing something slim. He said it just fits his eye. So then you've got the balancing act of giving him enough forgiveness, but with a look that, that he enjoyed. So you've got to take those, those sort of aspects on board. Um, you've got to live with them, you've got to look at them. It's like putters as well, you know, if you're fitting putters, you, you want to see something that you can aim, something that's good on the, on the eye. Mm. You know, not everyone's for a great big mallet, high over eye head, but you want to see slim. So there is that element of always wanting to like the look of a club. Yeah. Performance is key, obviously. Definitely, you, yeah. you never want to sacrifice <clears throat> performance when there's other, yeah, other things aesthetics. to be gained. Definitely yeah. not. But that's what we'll... Do you want me to hit a couple more? Uh, you can, you can. I, I'm going to... Um, I know a, a, a nice test head for us. Okay. Something I think you really will like. Okay. Both in look, performance, the whole shebang. Cool. I'm, going, I'm going to choose that. It's two degrees or one degree. Certainly a little bit more loft than what your current six has got. Okay. So when it has more loft, it doesn't go as far, but it goes higher up in the air? Mm, yes and no. Okay. Uh, it depends on the nature of how that head performs at impact. But the, the point is, I know the head that I'm referring to has got great looks, a great level of forgiveness for its size. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a nice sort of, future-proof head for you. All right, let's I'm not do saying it. it's the only head, but it's a great test head for us to do some shaft work with. Cool. Yeah, Lovely. and I'll go and grab that. All right. You want me to hit the pitching wedge? No. Okay. No, stick with six iron. Oh, you gave sorry, me a pitch. Sorry, I was meant to be giving the six oh, iron. All right, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah hit, hit your six iron a few more times. Wicked.
Good swim. That was your best shot so far. Yeah? Yeah. In, in terms of contact, it wasn't a great face angle. Yeah? So what, what, what is it that impacts face angle then? Is it my grip? It can be a number of things. Um, your path was a little bit more across on that swing as well. So your path moved more that way with an like open that. face. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is, is how the cleaner contact, obviously the open face, as I said, you're generating more loft because the open face is, these shots that I pinpointed were low spin, weren't they? Yeah, so suddenly you've one's... found 6,000 spin. One, because the contact was so much better. Yeah. But also with the open face, that makes it spin further more again. So it tells you that in terms of the range of spin that you get from various contacts, that's never going to bring consistency to carry numbers and so forth. Yeah. Yeah? yeah that was a very good contact. Yeah. That was your best contact. The head, the, you see the contact on the screen? Yeah, so middle that's much, pretty that much. much more central. Yeah. Yeah? And when I said to you, I, I, maths is pretty good. Yeah. I said 110, I see as, if that was a bit squarer, there'd probably be a bit more ball speed. It's like knocking a nail in, in, in the wall or in a piece of wood. If it's a square yeah. strike, it'll go in. Down the line, it goes in straight away. If yeah. you keep on giving it a bleak strike, it, it takes more blows. Yeah. So if you can get 107 ball speed there with a fairly open face, you can certainly get that, that 110 ball speed that I said with a square face. Which yeah? is good, which is really good, right? 110's, 110's good. Well, uh, it was a rough maths. Okay. It was a, a ballpark figure of what we should be able to obtain. Now, that's going to be your best number so far. Yeah? I thought, because of what you said there, of like feeling like I'm going to hit it that way a bit more. Yeah, but look what you've done. Oh, it's down the middle. Yeah. We're in play. One of, and it, actually, this, this, this tells you about that face angle. That's a faster ball speed than the previous shot. Yeah. But it wasn't as good a contact. No. But the just face by angle. being squarer, it's faster. Yeah? So when you combine that with a central hit, but all of a sudden your path and face are incredibly neutral and square, there's... there's tells you where my maths were. Decent one, spin one. as well. That's still decent spin. I yeah, I mean, that's spin. not a bad flight in terms of, it, it's a strongish spin, sub 5,000, but you've offset it with a, a nice, healthy launch. Okay. What's smash fac? The smash factor is that ratio, of, you know when I was making my calculation on where your ball yeah. speed should be, I'm doing quick maths in my head, of adding roughly 40% of the ball speed Take that ball speed, sorry, take the club speed, add 40% back on top. Got it it gives, you, gives me a rough estimate of where the ball speed needs to be as a minimum. But if you look at that, if that's in the middle, you find your 110 plus, don't you? Yeah? And what I'm going to do, I'm just give me a second. I'm, I'm going to take this, take this grip off. It's a, a thicker grip. Okay. I, the shaft I want to test, I'll just get a conventional grip. I'm only going to be a minute. Perfect, yeah. yeah. I'll just keep hitting some yeah. balls. Yeah, by all means. There you go. Grip change. Yeah, that was very quick. Yeah, we are now the Formula One of grip changes here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I bet yeah. you are, yeah. We are. <laughs> well, because you get, you know, at the end of a fit, someone says, well, I wouldn't mind trying that grip on a club. And you want to hit a few shots with that grip. Where we've got an airline now, and we basically use masking tape on that. We can pop grips on and off in a hurry. So that's, that's how we do it. All right, let's give this a go. So that's what have I got here? So what we've got as a head um, is a Titleist head, the T200. Yeah. This is the model that's only, the, the brand new model that's just arrived. Um, incredibly, the early signs are good. very good. Um, and the shaft, well, basically in weight terms, it's not, I would say maybe a few grams heavier than the shaft you're currently using it in your burners um, but it's just one of these classic shafts it's been around for 20 year plus years but it won't go away because it's just a great shaft okay yeah it's a right. Nippon 950 um, it's a good start point for us cool
it does look really nice looking down on it. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the first two are not your best, but let's hit a, let's hit a set of, you know, set of six or seven and yeah. see what develops. That felt really nice. Yep, slightly better number. Um, spin in a reasonably good place there. Quite a healthy launch. It's quite interesting. And then, yes, the face was a little bit open, so you put some of that down to that. Um, let's see. Slightly mm. chunky. That was chunky. Why I'm hitting so many right? So far. I'm a little bit disappointed with the, with the <laughs> outcomes, but um, we'll, we'll try and chip away at things. Oh, that was horrible. But that amounts to, you know we said about open face? Yeah. When you take it to the next level of open face. It's a shank, yeah. You know, you'll get someone's arm oh, standing too close to the ball. No, only after you hit it. <laughs> but um, the point is, when your face is more and more open, you can only introduce a heel strike. Yeah. yeah? That was a better pass. <laughs> Still right, though. Yeah, all I would say is there was a reasonable level of consistency. Definitely, But it's yeah. short of where we were with your own burners. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Quite but a long way. Yeah. <coughs> We're going to change the shaft up. OK. Another head that will come to mind. There's a, there's a few heads that are a good fit for you, potentially. Um, but we'll stick with this head. There's no point in making two changes to one chain. Try Thank you. a number of shafts, and then we'll uh, see if we can. So is this shaft feels lighter? Is it lighter? It's an interesting one, because it's the same weight as the previous shaft, but the balance of it comes across lighter. And potentially for that, easier to square. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'll just just pass that club back because I want want to just make sure, in balanced terms, that's achieved what I wanted it to achieve. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Okay. I just need to hit them straight. Come on. That looked nice. It's a little slightly open face. I'm not sure what I can do about this open face job. Set up for me. Grips a little bit 
at fault, mm -hmm. dare I say. Don't want to turn it into a golf lesson, but take the hand away. Get to the, use the length of the club a little bit more and then you can sort of get a little bit taller as well. Okay. Yeah, which might help with your speed. But take the hand away again. That's what it should look like. Okay. So the thumb's right of centre. Okay. If you had a, you know, if you had your glove off and you had a form of V, it would be out of here somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a bit weak. And then this hand here has got to complement that angle. So when you introduce the right hand, where do I want to go? Like, get a little bit more in the. The feeling is across those knuckles there. So the fingers are a little bit. That's it. That's it. And that's going to give you that dexterity and speed and release of the club head. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Do a couple of practice swings getting used to that feeling. Yeah, that feels... That feels very weird. We'll give I don't want to see... See your thumb in your right hand? Yeah. I don't want to... It's down, and you what you almost got a feeling that the index finger of your right hand is more of a trigger, and the thumbs is is a more of a soft. I once said to someone, if you had to lose one finger, what would you lose it? If you had to lose one finger for golf, my index finger, and I'd go my right right thumb. Your right thumb. Because I can play golf without that thumb. Okay. The, the when you apply pressure to that grip it can have a detrimental effect in the, how you release the club, from, particularly from the top. So, yeah, my point is that thumb and your index finger, the angles don't look quite right as I'm looking down, at, looking at your grip. It's just, yeah. It's got, a, it, it's got to look a little bit like that. So you, if you're side on, you, your thumb, top of your thumb and your index finger look more level. When I see you, you, you look like that. So thumb's long. Index finger, in, index finger short on the grip. That's it. Yeah? Cool, That's that. nice looking there. That feels so weird. Feels like I've lost like control of it. But I give it a go. Open minded. How many shots you hit left? Not many. Um, my bad shots go left. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> like a, a hook. So, let's be over there. Sense. This is like a pinch. Like a pinch. Like a pinch. I'm now hitting the ball left. But this is good. This is good. Yeah. Because I, what I've given you, forget about the club speed. That's actually a little bit slower as a club speed. But look where you hit it on the face. <laughs> have a look at the smash and have a look at your ball speed. Yeah? That's hilarious. I need to get one of those things <laughs> that like, corrects your grip and just walk around with it. Well, it just, it just, that gives you the capacity in that right hand to, to... I feel like I've lost all of my right hand strength in this, but it's ball's going further. Yeah. I'm glad this is on video. I'll sit back and watch this all night. <laughs> so what should we do for the other hour and, hour and a half? Should we just have a cup of coffee, talk about <laughs> politics or? Oh my word. <laughs> Yeah. So have you got have you got like one of those swing grip correctors then that you can recommend? <laughs> well, what's nice, just just on the serious side, if you look at this number here now, that easily matches up with the very best shots of your own. The only difference is where the flight is. You've got better flight with. If, if you look at some of the numbers from earlier, the 16 and 3-2 on the spin, well, that's technically not a good shot because you look at what it projects as a number in carry and, uh, and total. If I flip to the carry side of it, oh, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Mm. Those last three shots. But that one in particular, that's quite a nice flight here. Yeah? Um, it's a little bit of a fade move, but it's a, it's a good fade because if you look at where the face angle is, that's a smaller number than the path. And you always want to see that okay. in opposite polarities. 
So if you were in to out, you got a positive number on the path and a negative number on the face. Okay, yeah. um, but similarly here, slightly out to in, but that's a smaller number than that. General rule of thumb, if it's roughly half, it will fade back to target, or if you draw the ball, if it's roughly half, it will draw back to target. Um, but the nice thing is, the efficiency there, 141. My benchmark number was 140, so it's a little bit better quality strike. You can see it's in the middle of the face. What you did with this one, again, central, yes, it's a fraction shut. So you've got two negatives here. If that was a plus 1.4, that would be about here. Yeah? Um, but you picked up better contacts all of a sudden, and this open face is, is all of a sudden mysteriously disappeared. Yeah. Cool. How, how interesting. So it might feel weird, but it works. And don't be perturbed for seeing left here. For me, left is good for you in that you, you've suddenly got more capacity to square the face. Yeah. yeah? Well, it's not spinny, like spinny, horizontal spinny. Like when I slice it, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you, because like I said earlier, if you're going to be, a, 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 you know, predominantly open face and out to win as a move, you're going to see a spin number that's on the sub. Slightly lesser hit, yeah. a little bit low on the head, I fancy. Yeah. That was a bit like thin, wasn't it? Yeah. It's weird holding the club differently. Now, what I want to actually do, now that I've changed you there and we've seen the effect of it, yeah. I want you to. I want to actually go back to that first shaft. Okay. I didn't think you did it any justice. <laughs> no, not by the not by yeah. the I wouldn't normally do that, but because we brought better numbers to the table, I, I don't want to lose out on what could be a good shaft for you, because you didn't apply that same. Technique. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah you're yeah? right. Yep. So let's just revert back to this one. Thank you. How did that feel to swing that club? Nice. Yeah. Very okay. nice. Nice to look down on. Yep. Now, not necessarily your best contact but already that's the best shot you've hit with this shaft. Just by changing that's the one, grip. Yep, the one that's flashing away here. You yeah. see it's straighter and it's actually the furthest carry. I do think you probably hit that second shaft a little bit better, though. I think so, too. Uh, there was a, you suddenly picked up more efficiency, better strike point, yeah? Yeah, it's interesting what you said about... Um, I felt that other shaft was lighter, way lighter, and you said it was the balance. It's, it, it, in terms of dead weight, they're very close. It's just more in the balance of that shaft and how it impacts on the way a club swings. Good move. Well done. This again is a little bit, the other shaft seemed to not do as much left to right. Um, or am I wrong? You've still got your out to in path. It's just where the faces are squarer, that there's stronger numbers. Which one was that one, the one I just hit? The one you just hit was this shot here. No, okay. sorry, no. Uh, That one, yeah, because it felt good. Mm. 
But would you agree that the miss is now a better miss since the grip change? The shaft change? No. The grip change? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, since you changed my actual grip. Because 100 here is the earliest shots, and that's why I wanted to go back to this shaft. You've gone there, 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 all since coming back to it. That there were the numbers early on. So, if nothing else, <laughs> that's been a good discussion. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. It's kind of funny. I'm kind of like excited to see what happens because I feel uncomfortable, but it's working. So just pass that back. Yep. For me, I prefer the contacts you were getting with the first shaft. I think you've enjoyed that. Sorry, second shaft. Second shaft, okay. Um, the one before, yep. going back to that. Can I say something which you're probably going to hate? Go on. Would I be okay to hit a Mizuno at some point? Because oh, people always tell me that they're the nicest clubs. I've never hit one in my well, life. As long as it's an appropriate head, yeah. Definitely. definitely um, not definitely. a problem. I would have probably introduced one of those, but I'm not going to introduce it now while we're in the middle of testing shafts. No, 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 no. Definitely. But yeah, by all means. Um, is, there's one or two heads that I think it would be a good fit for you. Okay. Uh, JPX Forge would be a lovely model for you. Um, okay. I'm not necessarily a fan, say, for the JPX Hot Metal. That's more of a genuine game improvement, souped up loft, back to square one type of effect. Um, the HL is even more offset and chunkier solve for that's some unlimited ability. And then the Hot Metal Pro looks slimmer and everything else, but might be just long term. I don't want anything that's going to be too hard for me to hit. No, yeah. no, but the JPX Forged, JPX 923 Forged is the model that I would earmark for you okay. as a, as a one to try. try. Nice. But let's c crack on. I'm loving this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. So Thank you very this much. is one of my f one of my favourite lightweight steel shafts. So um, we've gone to a different shaft, yeah? Yeah. So it's the same brand as the previous shaft, only it's its younger, lighter brother, um, the Nippon 850. Um, This will come up on screen. It's just thinking about adding That's my right. title to this. Uh, I, I, that felt really nice, that shot. But, yeah, a little right. But it was a great contact point, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. I now, felt like they were both good. good what I will good say here, all right, they were both left a little bit open. Yeah. But there's more of an effortless ability to find the, the middle of the face with that. Mm. That's the way I describe it. And that, that. that could, the open face could still be because I'm getting used to this new Yeah, point. very much so. What I'm impressed with is if you actually look at where you struck the last two. Yeah, you could hear that, and you felt. Well, I that felt as well. it. Yeah, yeah, I felt it. So, especially as like changing your grip, like I have just done now, one of the things that I'm not confident about is hitting the ball. So to have middled it twice is. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. You're not far off the beaten track. If that was let's for us, let's for argument's sake say it's four degrees squarer, you've got a stronger number both in ball speed in in flight, um, and then it'll be up here. Yeah. Okay but it's a good start, start in strike terms. Again, similarly, it, it's, there's a level of consistency. If we can somehow so be a bit square. So the thumb goes over here and just pinch around here. Yeah, I think the, the, the reference is, you know your first knuckle, yeah. Not at the base of the finger, the first knuckle up. Yeah. 
when you grip it like that, use those as a reference. If that, that finger was the shaft, it would feel like that, okay. which feels like, it's like I always use as an analogy, if you were playing cricket and you were out, out on the border and you throw the cricket ball back to the wicket, do you throw it from the palm or do you throw it from, from the finger? Fingers, yeah. Speed and dexterity is in the fingers, isn't it? When, yeah. when it comes I'm to fast. things you have to move. Because I had it, yeah, like right in my palm, and now I'm going. Don't forget the left hand as well. When I said that had to be slightly further to the to the right as well. Yeah, remember. Uh, that's a uh, just that's bad from me. So what that is? That was a lovely pass. It, it's one of these where I love it in one respect because it's consistent. Because of the sheer consistency, yeah. It'd be very interesting. I wouldn't dismiss it because you really enjoy swinging that club, mm. and you, you, you actual, if you if you weigh up your strike point, there's a little bit more consistency here from heel to toe, and the strike points not it, the, gradually the strike points becoming a little bit more central. And if that was squarer. Yeah, that would get lower on the head as well. I just need to somehow get it squarer. Oh, it's so close. Keep on hitting. <laughs> but what I, what I will say it, it's like, to what extent could you do this justice further down the line? Because one thing that's very, very, very noticeable is how you repeat with this. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the fact that they're all going in the same place is incredible. They literally are going, it's a very small dispersion. Very. That one was a bit squarer. It felt a bit thinner. A little bit cleaner, a little bit lower on the head. Yeah. But it still dropped into that same dispersion ring. That's crazy, isn't it? Oh. That felt, that well, felt really go. nice. There you go. And watch this number here now. Yeah? That's up with the best. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Very close to my magic number. There she is. All because. <laughs> I was tempted to say all because the lady loves me at the tray, but um, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> point is when you're squarer, it's better again. Yeah. That's the only difference between nose contacts and that contact. It's having that face angle a little bit better. Yeah? Yeah. Got one going left. I think you're getting the pennies dropped a little bit, hasn't it? I think, yeah, I've, I've had some swing uh, grip issues. Yeah. But um, there's something here around. But what you will say, at what point have you given me a poor contact since using this shaft? I hit that one to the left. The better so the face angle, yeah. The better the face angle gets, the further the ball goes. Yeah. Yeah? But at no point have you given me poor contact with this shaft. No, this shaft, it's, this one feels... If, if you it's want, the if one you, where I've there, felt... There, like there's your strike points across all shots. Yeah. Yeah? You see where yours was for yours? Yeah. That is a marked change. What's the ones in the other two as well? The other two shafts. 
that was pretty good as well. That two alike that we also said, you know, when it when we yeah. started to transform the numbers a bit. Yeah. yeah, we sort of dismissed, for me, dismissed the nine fifty. Even coming back to it after the grip change, I, I always felt the strike wasn't as good. It yeah? didn't feel as good. So, but but that. If we address the face angle hit issue, you can see how effective that is, like it is on the last two shots. Yeah. But at no point have you given me a poor contact. And that, no, that, I did, sits, I do high, with them a lot. that sits high on my list. Can I have a hit with this one again? Just yeah. now I've corrected my grip yeah. and just see if it... That's a great shot. That felt like the same sort of connection I've been hitting with this one. Yeah, but, but it wasn't, if you look at where that's flashing, that should be up here, shouldn't it? Yeah, I so, felt like I hit it better than that. Yeah. That's what I wanted to know. But that's reassuring, isn't it? Yeah, that's reassuring. I wanted to know that I'm hitting this one better than that one. Well done. Oh, that felt so good. We're getting but a there. little bit off, a little bit. I really need to work on getting this face through centrally. Well, yeah, but and, and also where you, obviously your speed is a little bit. Up and down. Up and down. In one moment you're 75, next moment you're 78. And so. The, and why is that? Is that just my speed? I think it's just where we're discussing a little bit of technique and the grip and that. and. You don't, you can't really go into fifth gear as such. But what I will say is that your path can vary a bit as well. Sometimes it's a bit stronger out to in, sometimes it's a bit more neutral. Mm -hmm. So there's slight variances on the path. If you get a good relationship with the, the um, face and path, then you'll always get the straight shot. Um, is that, have I just accidentally put one on the, on the other club? Hey, it there? doesn't matter, I can transfer it over, that's what I'm going to do here. And how come uh, you start with six iron? Because our, cause, cause that's our test club. Okay. That's, our te that's what we nominate as our test, uh, our test uh, club number. Oh, that was, I tried to hit that one too hard. Well, hit it harder then. <sighs> Wasn't too too poor, too bad. No. No. Wow. Now that is sexy. Oh, it's right up there. Yeah. Good ball speed. Good smash. But then, back. The, but then I said it. it your speed is variable. Mm -hmm. That's more on your limit of speed. So you found 80 miles an hour, you got a smash of 141, suddenly, oh, nearly 113 ball speed. Now can you see where my mass was coming from? Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's a really nice goal shot. Oh, that felt so good as well. I didn't try and hit that one hard either. That's a silly thing. The one before, I was like, I'm trying to hit this hard because I want to get my speed up and stuff. Yeah. It's not about that. A little bit sclaffy, but you'll get away with that one. You'll take that as a bad one. Where was that one? Yeah, I mean, it's still... Yeah. I'm really enjoying hitting this, so. That, for me, is a great shaft for you, yeah? Yeah. Because you've got that lovely leisurely rhythm, I don't really want to bog you down with too much weight. I just want something that, that you feel comfortable about making a pass with. Well done.
Oh, Mark, that one felt really nice. Oh, it's gone a little right again. But it's, it's again, it's, it's probably going to be in the, in the mix with the others, right? Yeah. I mean, that level of consistency, I've never had any of that in my game. That's on top of another ball. That yeah, I hit. know. Okay. What you have learned is that when you give me square of face, this performed better than the other shaft. Yeah. Yes, there is issues to work on. Yeah. Controlling path line and face angle. Yeah, that's yeah. the key. The grip is a nice change for the future. But at no point with all those shots hit, there's no in information down here at all, is there? No. No, it's, fat. it's, so it's, what, it's what, lovely to hit. It is, it is. And, and I know the exact hole I want to take it to at home. Look, yeah, it's great. Yeah. So that shaft, is that like a tightly shaft or is that just a shaft that you guys No, use? It, it, it's... Because I, I know shafts are a bit... I saw a video on the YouTube. Shout out to the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> where someone said something about aftermarket shafts and all that sort of stuff. It's very interesting. Right, so what that shaft it represents is a premium Japanese shaft. Mm -hmm. But it is also a, generally a mainstream shaft. Okay. So it's not so exotic that it's aftermarket only, um, like I say, a sh uh, Shimada or a, an Oban, which are made by Shimada. Okay. Um, some manufacturers still supply the 850, majority don't, but some do. So like a tailor-made, um, Titleist offer it as uh, a custom upgrade. So there's a surcharge to it, but but it's available through them. Um, so that's the deal with it. Okay. But it's a very high quality, lightweight. But that shaft can go into different when it, when it comes to lightweight steel shafts, the Japanese know best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that shaft can go into other clubs. That's the point, right? It doesn't have to be a tight least. No. Okay. Cool. No. It can be. Sometimes, let's for argument's sake whatever head we choose might change things because might change different. things because that has to then be brought in as a set of shards and that as it cost implications of adding that to the cost of the build okay. but we don't know how much this combo cost me well, that, that, that off the top of my head although i won't mention prices but what i will say is we can get the 850 through tight list okay but it's for me to weigh up because there's two routes, we can we can sort of okay. bring it in as a head only, which is more cost effective for you, even if it's the cost of the shaft going on top, because the, the head only would be a discounted. Got it, okay. Head. Yeah. So don't worry too much about the moment, what you want to worry about at this moment in time, and see what comes out of the wash the other end. 100%, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All we do know is that shaft's gold, yeah? Yeah. I've hit my first bad one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to change that though. We're going to change yeah. head. Okay. Yeah. This cool. is where I think that is a great change. Yeah. Lovely shaft. <laughs> it's so you've got that lovely leisurely, even tempo, which I you know is good on the eye, but you're never going to fit into a very heavy strong shaft. You're always going to enjoy these lighter options, in my view. I like a light hockey stick. Like, Do you? Like to light cricket bat. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Even though I'm not, I'm not you know, I wouldn't say I'm um, weak. No, I'm no, like... but you, you've got, you'll get another guy who's very brisk, and he might have not that much more speed than you, but he loads it all, it's all time different, loaded different, you know. And in that respect, you, you look at someone, you go, right, I just feel I want to go this way in weight and, and, and strength of shaft. You know, um, with you, it's played at a lovely rhythm, but I don't see you ever enjoying, if I put a very heavy shaft in your hand, you'll, you'll hate it. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. 
And I should work on this grip change for all my clubs, right? For my driver as well. Three wood. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Same applies, don't it? You can have a laugh down at the range. No? Okay. So there this is the head I refer to. Yep. Of the whole Mizuno range, yep. the JPXs and the MPs, this is the one head, is that middle ground of forgiveness with feel and performance, yeah? Okay. That's a bit chunky, I think. I like that green, nice colour. Yeah, it just changed colours. So I changed change the uh, title on the top of the screen. Yeah. Now, what you will note is the sound. It's a, a softer sound yeah, to this head. Yeah, a bit head. duller. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Where am I getting it on the face? It feels like I'm a bit close to the heel. That, that last one was a little bit more in the heel, yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little bit closer in strike, that one. I think also, again, I don't want to turn it into a lesson, but your angles can let you down at times, the way you set up to it. Okay. Um, you sort of your lower body, your feet, your knees, your hips all look a little bit to the right, um, and it's a little bit pigeon-toed. Your left, left foot could be splayed out a little bit, okay. which allows you to turn into your left side a little bit better. But... I'm all for tips. Because with you, it's always a look for me. When I see you get more neutral in path and face, I know we've got good numbers around the corner. Yeah. Yeah? The one thing I will say, getting back onto this, the tightest. Yeah, it's dominating. Well, I did say how good that head is. Yeah. It, it's, it, they've done such a good job with that head. Yeah. It doesn't feel I'm, as... I'm, what I would say... It doesn't feel as good as the, no, no. when I'm hitting it. Uh, sometimes it just that happens to be a great fit for someone else. Yeah. Um, that's the one model within the range. I don't see Anything you entertaining else? the MPs. I don't see you entertaining the hot metal versions. This is the one head that ticks that box of forgiveness with feel and longevity, uh, you know, future proof. That one felt quite nice. Still not tapping into close to the numbers. Of the tightness. You know, the way I would see that, do you know when we looked at this cluster here? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it, I, I can tell. It and the only difference it. between that and some of these is just by being a bit squarer. Yeah. But that, compared to that, tells a story. Because you enjoyed the strike. You said it felt quite nice. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't tapped into the, to the numbers that you got from the tight list. Yeah. So 
You would agree with that? Carl, completely agree. Completely yeah. agree. Okay. Completely, completely agree. I've got another lovely head lined up for us okay. here. I don't think this is the one, though. I prefer the tightest. Yeah. That's as good as you can, for me, that is as good as you've swung all day. Yeah? Yeah. Contact was out the middle. It's a nice finish. Yeah. That's your best number with... The Mizuno. With the Mizuno. But is it as good as that? No. Yeah? Nope, it's not. And I hit a few up there with the tight least. That's the first one I've hit up there with this. You're getting better in contact here now. Yeah? Yeah. A little bit open face, it's just spot the number, it's spun up a bit. It's, the contact felt great though. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I can see why people like them, because they do sound really nice. They're softer sound. Yeah. Sound really nice. You know, the tight lease was better. Yeah. 100%. It's, that's a great head. Yeah. Pure and simple. But the next head is a great head as well. Okay, all right. So what we got here is part of the Strix and ZX series. Okay. ZX5 Mark II. Yeah. There's a ZX7, which okay. is more of a player's cavity. And you also got the capacity to do a combo set. So you can have this in your longer iron, have the smaller, more compact design that looks very, very similar. It blends perfectly well. Okay. Um, How would you know to do that, to mix the set? This is gen general discussion. Okay. General discussion. Um, I see this as, for me, this being your model. Okay. But someone said, oh, quite like the idea of a slightly more compact look in the short lines and then that's where the combo discussion Maybe. comes okay. from and they, by, they, by they blend perfectly the shorter look? sorry what do you mean by the slightly more so they look to all intents and purposes on, on the untrained eye the same club very similar cosmetics very similar cavity shape and so forth the zx7 is a little bit narrower okay. in the head it's hair shorter in the blade length okay okay the f there's more face tech off this version, so it's a thinner, slightly hotter face, yeah? Mm -hmm. The interesting thing when we look at numbers and we, we, we blend in sets, they do a fantastic job of being combined because what you see off this head is a slight injection of ball speed with a relatively high launch on a slightly strong, strong spin number. So when someone's got issue, you know, I hit my five the same distance as my six or my four iron the same distance as my five, I don't seem to gain a benefit. When you introduce this at that, at that area where they want that bit more forgiveness and injection of performance, that's where it blends in nicely. Got it. Yeah? Got it. But that's, on face value, this is the head I would test. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's give it a go. Fatal mistake, never click on, on the library. <laughs> it, it will come up on the screen, it's just making its mind up. Felt money. I had, um, I wrote down a few other questions actually for, I wanted to ask you, which are? What's the weather doing tomorrow? Yeah, I wish I knew that. Um, so I had, yeah, so what ball should I use? Yeah. Do I need a four iron? Because I have a rescue that I hit really well. We're going to come to that. Okay, I've cool. covered that anyway. And for some reason, I seem to hit the ball better out the rough than I do off the fairway, but I think that might be because of the grip. That's all about angle attack. Okay. Yeah? Um, this is, you know the same scenario, just move away from, uh, I'll explain that one now. Yeah. Get that out of the way. If you hit a ball off a tee peg, it's the same effect as the feeling you get of hitting it out the rough. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because you've got a cushion of grass, you don't see the grass as a disadvantage. You see as I, I can get underneath it. Mm -hmm. When you get off a tighter turf, it's like, I must hit this ball, I must hit this ball. But I can't finally hit a fairway, I need to but hit But can't it. quite get your head round what you need to change 
in order to hit that ball cleaner. Yeah. Some of your angle attacks, there's variance there as well. If you've got a decent angle attack, in other words, the club is on its way down, picks up the ball, compresses it, and the way the ball goes, they're what, what creates good goal shots. When you bottom out early, the low point of that swing is too shallow. That gives you very little margin of error on the strike. Out of rough, you've got that cushion of grass that allows you that indiscretion. You haven't got that same, um, the same oh, yeah. ability off of a tight lie on the fairway. Now, it should be easy to hit off the fairway. Yeah. But what you're, for me, it's the angle of attack that is having a bearing on what you see as an easier shot when it should be a harder shot. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Just out of interest, um, just, yeah, sorry, not out of interest. The shot I hit before yeah. felt really good, and that one just then felt really good too. D certainly, where am I at? Is that that one? I'm not sure if I got, I'm not sure if I got that last shot. It didn't come up on the screen, because that sounded an awful lot better than that. Yeah, it sounded good. Yeah. Ready now? Yep. Cool. That's quite nice. Is that that one or is it the... That it one? was that one there. Yeah, it did feel nice. Yeah. Now, this is typical of the Strix and range, and, and this head in particular, where it always gives you healthy launch. Have you noticed the launch? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? But it's done with a relatively strong spin. So when you're looking particularly at that lower end in the irons, that's a very effective performance of the higher launch with that stronger spin. Yeah? And, and there's no surprise in that. It's doing what I expect it to do. This is a good head, <laughs> yeah? If it, I mean, the feel when I hit it as well, it feels so... It's that middle ground, if, if in terms of feel, would you agree it's that middle ground where the tight list is a little bit more active, a little bit clickier, and the Mizuno was very soft? Yeah. This sits absolutely bang in the middle in feel terms. Yeah, it does, it does feel nice. It's a forged body, um, there's a bit more tech on the face, but what I will say, that this is a very, very tidy start. A little bit open face, but again, the contact contact was reasonably good. I Do think you know if you chuck that shot in, if you, if you chuck that particular swing in, yeah. you've, got your, you've got all that information there as a reference. So see that against that. This head is every bit as good as the Titleist head. Yeah. You agree? I agree. I and agree. it's a great looking head as well. Not that one. I didn't get that one right. But again, very open. Yeah? Yeah. Nectar. Get the feeling you're enjoying this. I, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this club. Which, yeah, I've hit some good ones up there. You've got to see it as a comparison to that tight list. Um, it's 
it's doing a very, very nice, tidy job. Yeah? yeah. You're not a robot. You can't expect every shot to be perfect. But the general trend is good. Oh, not that one. I almost looked too lazy. Yeah, I wonder if I was too lazy there. Very tidy. Nice information here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sharpen up these numbers a little bit, just so we get a perspective of where the performance is on the two, the two heads. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Um, because I, for, for the heads that are out on the market, what we've tried, the, these are my three forgiving. Oh, that's gone left, but it felt nice still. Yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah. Actually, close the face there. Did yeah. I? Face was close to the path. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to take that one away only because it is left to the point of actually influencing the number. That, okay. That's where I see that. I'm just going to lose some of the titles only for the fact that they're too f they're too far right for the purpose of seeing where the numbers compare mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it does feel I nice. think there's a nice comparison there all right so um, tight list full speed 1065 Quite a nice flight on that. Oh, that felt really good. Well, it's just another one in the pack, isn't it? Yeah. Which one was that one? Uh, last shot was there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right down the middle. So he's got the that higher launch, but with the spin always being a little bit more contained on that head. Yeah. I think they both look lovely. What They're do you look for then in a head that makes it look really nice that you think? It's all subjective, isn't it? Yeah. Fin top lines can look different. Um, the Strix has always come with a flat top line. What tightlists tend to do is roll their top line. Mm. Gives the impression of being thinner for, for rolling that top edge. Here is a flatter top line. But, you know, this, the, the, they're very, very, Good looking clubs yeah yeah so th what you would say is the tight list here as i said about 165 one, 1065 on the ball speed that's a pretty nice flight um, it's not going as far as i'm trying to think six iron should seem to go further than that right or is that not right or do you want me to forget about numbers only because I know that what you're capable of further down the line, if you apply yourself a bit better, get your path line square or your face square for that path line, more compression, mm -hmm. more ball speed. Yeah, it's relative to what does compression mean? Sort of almost like coming down through it. Yeah, you need that sort of square strike, downward strike, balls compressed. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but the, the point I'm making here, if you look at the ball speed there, yeah. and you look at the ball speed there, oh, the same. they're the they're same. Amazing. Yeah? Yeah. If you look at where, where the numbers vary, it's purely by the nature of the flight you get with, with the Strix and head. You nick about a yard in carry. Not a lot, but you nick about a yard of carry. And that's only because of that characteristic with the tight list, it launches a little bit lower with a little bit more spin. This launches predominantly higher, but with a little bit less spin. Okay. So the characteristic of flight is, in, is impacting the, the carry number a little bit there. But two really very, 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 very similar performing clubs. Very good. I really have enjoyed hitting them.
That felt reasonable. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know. <laughs> they're grouping well yeah. again. These ones seem to be going a little bit straighter than the tight least. It's a lot of it is that you know that control of spin. Yeah. Yeah. It it's yeah. just having an impact on a little bit more consistency of carry. I think. That was a bit chunky, that, that one. That was chunky. But I think it's a really falls, it's, it, to me, there's, it's decision time. Because I think we've got two great heads. We know we've got a shaft that you really enjoy swinging yep. and getting strike from. Can I try the tightest again? Yeah. Yep. But these two are you, fantastic. You can't, you know, <laughs> the bottom line is we got to a point where you can argue a case on both heads yeah they'll look slightly different they'll feel slightly different but the numbers are very very slight subtle change in the way they perform um as i said that selec seven uh, five does a great job of creating launch but off, offers a stronger spin as opposed to the type this is a little bit lower launch with a little bit more spin but thank you they are very close yeah, I do think I probably prefer the look of this looking down at it. It with the rolled top, it gives it a slightly slimmer top line. Yeah, yeah. Good bad one. Yeah, that's a good description for bit, that. Bit chompy. Bit of a ground, yeah. Contact yeah. was a bit higher on the head. So you lost a little bit of that spin. You lost a little bit of the ball speed. It feels like it's going to have... Mm, no, not really. Not really. It was centre of centre when it comes to contact. And what's happened? Oh, it's gone quite a long way, actually. Yeah. God, this is actually quite tough because I don't actually know which one I prefer. <laughs> as long as it's before Christmas. Yeah. How long do the clubs take to... Um, our lead times are up to six weeks um, from placement, placement of order. I don't know why, I, for some reason, if it, it's just... I think you can introduce, and I think you're agreeing with me here, I think you can introduce more weaker face angles with the tight list than I do the Strixon. I think so too, the ball seems to go further right. If the, you think, the look, looking at left to right dispersion, front to back dispersion, if you have any, anything to go by, uh, like I said, we, you could argue a case and make a story in, in different ways but I didn't see that sort of shot from the Strixon head and you no. said you said even when you were hitting the, the Strixon you noticed you weren't seeing as much movement yeah yeah definitely Nice contact. Very nice. Yeah, I, I think I think I prefer the Strixon. I prefer the look of well, this. Well, the, the bit I that I have, you know, the dirty talk, the money. Yeah. That's where it really is different. What Strixon's a lot more. We're head only account. We piece it as head, shaft, grip. Okay. The heads are so competitively priced. That's where it, I didn't mention that. Well, give me a ballpark. I'm, I don't mind talking about. I think it's worth. Right? I think it's worth probably about two to three hundred pound difference as a set of irons between the two, and and it's it's just a no-brainer a lot of the time with these strips and heads because they're so good performing heads. 
um, and you price it up and, it, and it, it's like, wow, really, Japanese? <laughs> Japanese head, you know, looks great, feels great, performs great. Cost, cost, cost is great. Cost is great, but, but you know, but that's the nature of it. Um, the tightest, that, that 850 is uh, an upcharge, I think it's band one upcharge, it's about 20 pound per club on top, but it's cheaper than building that shaft yeah. from scratch, yeah? yeah? Um, but I, I really, every time you hit this restriction, I think it's just control of spin, consistency of spin, it's easy to launch. It didn't seem to move as much about in the air, and it works out really, really good in costing. Yeah, I would, I'd run with it. With the friction. I think it's very future proof as well. Yeah. I sort of came in thinking like twelve hundred would probably be what I'd spend around, but are you thinking fifteen hundred for strixons? Like, do you know what? That give me a rough. Well. Six clubs cost less than seven clubs, which cost less than eight clubs. Yeah, okay. And true. that's where the subject of how many clubs you're going to have comes in. Okay. Yeah, but the one thing I will say, um, with the numbers you're getting, you've got no issue with a five. Four is your cusp. Yeah, because I'll show you the four I've got, or I've got a four hybrid, and this yeah. is the club. This is the club I hit the best. Yeah. It's obviously bog standard. My dad got it for me for Christmas maybe yeah. four years ago, something like that. Maybe a bit older than that, actually. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, I've never played wouldn't with it be five better than on the basis of something that's really good in your bag, that's got a good story, yeah. would be to start the set at five. Yeah. Because it, it, it also fall, falls to ability levels and consistency levels. Yeah, and uh, five, five iron got an issue. The five iron, just on the basis of your six iron numbers, you, you want a five iron in the bag for sure. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, this this will do like two hundred, two hundred five. That's what that normally does for me at the moment. Maybe two ten. Yeah, let's let's see what what loft, what is that? Twenty two? Is it twenty one? Okay, you can have a look. Have a look at twenty one loft. I mean, often is the case where they might put four on it, but it doesn't replace a four iron. It goes further than what a four iron ever would do for someone. Mm -hmm. And I fitted someone yesterday where I fitted them a four hybrid for their three iron, and I fitted them a five hybrid for their four iron mm -hmm. because of where the numbers were. Yeah, you know, got a lovely little sort of twelve to fifteen yard gain on the five hybrid over their four iron and uh, over their five iron. So it, it done the job of a four-iron replacement. So in that respect, you've got adjustability on this one as well. I've never touched any of that adjustability stuff with it. On the basis of your better numbers here, let's just take that, that shot there, for instance. That's a, a nice contact, carrying just short of 160, yeah? Um, I, it's, uh, I think there's more in the locker to at a later stage here as well, but, mm -hmm. but I see that as a reasonable indicator. So I would see you carrying a five iron ballpark figure of 167, yeah? One, 175 total-ish. I had my first hole in one this summer. It was 179 was, was the number, so. Yeah. Yeah, so. I don't, I don't, I've never had a four iron. I don't feel like I need a four iron. No, no. I think what you need to do is assess what number you get off that. Okay. To know what to do, because it might be that this works great, but actually goes too far for what you need it for. for. Yeah. So you need to rein it in a bit if you want it to be, let's say, a four iron replacement. Yeah. Do you want me to hit this? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Because I, my sense is, at the moment, Outdoors in the warmth, the ball is going further than it might be in here. Is that is that is that happen very often? It depends on how we set this, the, the, how we set the algorithms up. I mean, we we work on the basis of sea level around about uh, seventy-two degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. I'm just interested to see what whereabouts this one. Oh, it's not actually gone pretty far. You got more 
contact to find there. There's a lot more in the locker. That's more. That's a different number entirely. Yeah. It's flared out right a bit. Swings well, this. I love this club, honestly. If ever I can use it, I can't well, use it. Well, there for me tells the whole story about that club. Yes, it's the same situation if your face angle's better. Yeah? Yeah. Falls into the same category, doesn't it? Yeah. But you can't fault that contact. Um, centre of centre there. Spins up a little bit, but then that face angle needs to be three degrees more closed to see it back to the target. And it will spin less and for being square. Yeah. Um, but the stand, the stand, the strike looks good. Look, I think it swings reasonably well for you. That club, it doesn't look like it's difficult. Um, Gets me out of a lot of trouble, as you can probably imagine, because it's really, it is obviously just like a feels like a bar of soap on the end of. But it is what it is. If you look at that carry, yeah, it's doing more than what a, f a little bit more than what a four iron would do for you as a comparison. Yeah. If you call it on your optimum shot, let's say 160 carry on, on the six iron, mm -hmm. ballpark figure of one, 170 carry on the five. Rudimentary sort of maths, but um, you can see that's just found a fair bit more again. That's the only thing I will say, it, it's a four hybrid, but it's doing more. Three and a half, isn't three it? And a, yeah. Yeah. That's fine though, I still, I st the other thing I have in my mind I mean, is... What you want to do at some point is a sort of more review of the other side of things at some point oh, as well. Yeah. And then tie it all up. Yeah. Because often it's the case you need those two sides to, to get a feel for how it matches up in the middle. Yeah. Need another grandparent to die for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. What I want to... I think we found a nice spec. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, What I'm going to do is make a, make a note of what we've just done. Do you want me to plug it in? What's that, sorry? Do you want me to plug it in? It says it's running low. Oh, is it? Yeah. Where do you play your golf, Mark? I used to always be out of Surrey for years and years. When I played a fair bit of Sur county stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I was originally, as a kid, I came out of Wimbledon Common until my late thirties, and, and I had too too many arguments with public on the golf course who, <laughs> who, who thought they knew everything when they didn't, and um, and then moved moved away, joined the Drift, which is not too far from here, East Horsley. Um, nice golf course. Always had issues in the winter, a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. I think they really got their act together again. They've done all the drainage again, so I heard. Fantastic range there. Got quite commercial because the range is more like a, let's say, a hoe bridge or a pine ridge in terms of the range is a money maker now, yeah. as opposed to what it used to be. It's just the service, the members it in golf yeah. course. Okay. And then, um, and then uh, sort of ended up moving out to Hampshire. Mm -hmm and then just search for a new golf course um, and settled at a place called Waverwick Park, which is in Basingstoke. Very progressive, nice nice membership, nice guys. Um, nice. Young golf course, redeveloped, um, moving on. It's, it's gonna be, in my view, when it sort of settles down, it'll be one of the best courses in Hampshire. It's, it, it's that sort of, they haven't got masses and masses of funds, and it's okay. all managed quite nicely financially. Don't get ahead of themselves. But it's a good place to play. It's a challenge, it's always a challenge. It's a windy golf course. Okay. It's exposed, and um, it blows. It's not narrow, narrow as a golf course, but there's enough trouble, a lot of water features and stuff. Nice. So that's where, 
that's where we play. What we're going to move on to is a discussion of what we want to do wedge-wise. Okay. Where we put the lofts, what shafts to have in the wedges, um, what you feel comfortable is your maximum loft. And so, well, oh, so I have wedges that I actually quite like. Yeah. A gap, a lob, and a sand. Yeah. But my pitching wedge in here, I hate. <laughs> well, you're not going to hate that anymore. Okay. Not with this new design. No, okay. It's going to be a lot better on the eye. It's going to feel a lot sweeter to hit. Okay. So don't worry about that in that respect. I okay. expect the pitching wedge to feel much nicer than the old one. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what you've got in terms of the loft, is, was this bought like a set, wasn't it? Yeah, set yeah. of three. From Costco. Amazing. Yeah, I know. I can see, yeah. The Kirkland signature. Yeah. But I really like. I really. I get on really well with them. It's funny how they've they've branched out. They they've put dipped their toe into golf. Their golf ball caused a bit of a stir about yeah. four years ago when when they bought out a ball that. I suppose it's quite a good ball, isn't it? The, the the first version of it, it was very pro v one performance. Was it? But it was just a silly price, and tightest. Um, Put a bit of weight on it, but um, but yeah, they've they've not replicated that performance in testing. It, it, it they, they you know they're balls for the price. They I suppose they're okay. They come out a half decent factory in the Far East, but um, but the first ball, really, everyone was talking about. What's this ball that's performing like a Pro V1? That's about yeah, <laughs> a, fifth, a fifth yeah. of the cost. Yeah. Um, well, not a fifth, say say a third, but um, yeah. So they they've sort of put their toe in the water of that. <laughs> yeah, so I got I got I saw a you know a, I I needed some new wedges because the ones that came with this set I just had a sand and a pitch and I and I, my, I had one of my dad's old clubs. I just hated. It. I didn't get on with them at all. So I just thought, what's out there and. I saw a few YouTube videos about these Kirkland wedges, and I was like, Phew. I'll give them a go. Well, I think a good, a good little test is to go through, get a few numbers off of some fuller shots off the mat, mm -hmm. see where the spin is. You know, um, the spin needs to be in a certain place if you're going to compare it with any of the mainstream premium wedge heads. Um, That'd be a good start point, probably. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got my gap wedge. Yeah. So or do you want me to hit the pitch? What do you want me to go for? Well, there's no need to hit the pitch because that's the club that's, you don't like on the old set, is yeah, it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's just uh, Let's stick with the ones I do like. Okay. Yeah. Here's the gap, which is a. Oh, I got 52. Ah, uh, just forward mat. Just if you go to the forward mat, that's it. My days of being a wicket keeper have gone. <laughs> I see. Probably will, will actually. I'm just going to shift the track man forward as well for us just to get a little bit of a. I mean, they're not getting too fancy with the shafts they put in them. They're, they're sort of like a entry-level true temper 
Brought the Kirklands. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a true temper shaft, but it, it's there sort of almost like a unitized parallel steel shaft that they they make in mass. Um, but it's the, the bit that's good about it is that the shaft as a, as a weight fits quite nicely for a wedge. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not a particularly techy shaft, but a lot of the wedge shafts that are popular aren't techy. If you look at the Dynamic Gold, it's it's essentially a forty th it's a forty year old shaft this mm -hmm. year, and and that's in the Dynamic Gold version. The original Dynamic was exactly the same step pattern. You can go back another hand for or a good number of years up before that. So, but the reason why people like it is because of the weight aspect of it. And where the balance point is in the shaft, and also where where the bend bend in the shaft is, it gives good feel on wedge shots, on partial shots. So some of the heavier shafts don't have to be a techy shaft to work quite nicely as a wedge shaft. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, it makes sense. I realise I'm hitting this off on the wrong line. I've been aiming down to the left. Aim on the line that it wants me to go. Yeah, that'll pick up a better direction. Yeah. That's a bit thin, that one. But there's a certain irony to that, because I was looking at some of your numbers, and where at times the angle of the attack is a little bit on the shallow side and you lose that spin side of it, mm -hmm. that crisp contact that you just gave me was one of your best spin numbers. Was it? Yeah. Uh, there was this one here, there, there was, that was a little bit better, and then this one, was the crispest of, of, of them all with 10,000 spin. A lot of these have got what I see as quite low spin numbers, yeah? But I do think it's more about the quality of the hit, mm. if the truth be known. 100%, yeah. There was an angle attack of zero. You, that, how much of that was ground and, and hence has a huge impact on the spin side of things, yeah? See that just on my on my ear that's just that sound of a little bit you'll get away with it don't get me wrong but a little bit ground and ball same time okay so as a spin number it finds what is essentially 3,000 spin light um, not as a detriment um, as an indicator of the club it's more as a quality of of strike when it's a crisper strike the spins in a good place Just a hair better. Yeah. But I feel like they're quite consistent now. I've got them yeah, moving a bit. Yeah. But it, it's just, for, I'm just being very, very, um, not judgmental, but, but just, a, I'm just pointing out what I need to point out. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. If you're averaging 0 0.9 down on a, on a wedge shot, mm. then you need to work on that number. Okay because you want to be picking up ball up first, getting the spin on it, then it's control the distance, control on landing and so forth. So do I need to work on maybe coming like that a bit more? Or am I no, going it's just that? the feeling. That if you go, go back, go, no, no, just to face me, face yeah. me. So as you turn back, the feeling with wedge shot is that to go that way. Look back. Stay low. There, okay. stay low. Okay. That goes that way. That encourages better delivery. Yeah? Okay. Never let it ride high. 
Okay. You're in trouble. Yeah. Wedge wedge is all about getting that the shoulders to work that way to 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 turn this left shoulder. That's it there. Okay. Yeah. That will give you that more consistent crisper strike. Okay. I mean, a lot of this falls down to budget as well. You know. Um, I think what you ideally want at some point, whether it's today or whether it's another day, is how these compare and feel and performance with what's out there. Yeah, and I'm interested to know that. You know, so also what you've got to bear in mind is where I fitted you into that weight of shaft. It, it's what shaft would be a better fit in relation to the changes we're making on the iron. Mm -hmm. I already know what would be a nice shaft to try which is the bigger brother, that didn't necessarily work well as a iron shaft, but will be a better weight on a wedge. And so why would that shaft, so say for the pitching wedge again, I know I'm not hung up on the pitching wedge, but as an example, would that, would that shaft work in the pitching wedge as well, but works in the six iron? Yeah, as a set. The way you relate it is any full shot keeps to the same theme in shaft terms. Okay. Once you're introducing clubs that you hit a high percentage of partial shots, then it falls. It could fall to a different area in weight. Okay, got you. That makes sense. If you're hitting a little partial shot, you feel like the weight is an advantage. When you're hitting it on a fuller shot, you feel that the lighter shaft is the advantage. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Putting us a sand iron loft together here, only because um, this will come up a better length as a sand iron. I've given you Cleveland as an example. Yeah. It happens to be the sister company to Shrixen as well. Okay. But um, very, very good on spin numbers. There's the opportunity to try a shaft as a comparison to that as well. So that's the 950, I fit it into the 850, that's the 950, so it's 10 grams up essentially. Got it. Ballpark. Try that as a yeah, comparison. Yeah, I'm excited, yeah. Yeah? It's the sand, yeah? Yeah, I've given you a 56 loft. Okie doke. I don't know how much you've taken on board what I told you to do. Yeah, 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 I have, yeah. Because now you're giving me a proper downward strike. I'm not sure how much is the club because <laughs> you're now finding about nine and a half thousand revs on those. Well, it's not a full blown, more three quarter type shot. Yeah. So you can spin is there. But what you have done over those two shots is give me a five degree downward strike that you didn't give. When yeah, you're I'm trying swinging to keep over. my keep my shoulder low as you said yeah yeah do you feel like you're getting more of the ball first here definitely yeah that one is a bit shallower wasn't quite as good as effective as the other two but still on average a little bit more spin than you were getting obviously there's a little bit more loft here as well but That was crisp. You could hear that. Yeah, I've knocked that one out left though, a bit. Yeah, but even it's, it's left. I mean, that's picked up nearly 10,000 spin. But you also give me five degrees down. Yeah? Yep. I'll try and hit it on that thing. I keep forgetting. I keep wanting to hit it sort of down the middle, which to me is, anyway. Yeah. It's... 
dare I say it, that, that target line's not a great angle for the forward mat. Yeah? Yeah. Would you agree that that one was the one that you felt a little bit more ground and ball on? Um, wasn't as crisp, was it? It didn't feel as crisp. No. But it didn't feel terrible. Suddenly you've lost that 3,000 revs again. Have I? Okay. Yeah. That one, I think, has come off really close to the heel. Yeah, I'd probably... If I was to move that target line further across for you, I fancy that... Um, that was definitely ground before ball. I need to work on that, that keeping the shoulder down, because it feels a bit... Yeah, it, it, it is literally, for me, it's... If it get that way, the low point is too far behind, or, or potentially is too far behind. It's just that feeling there. Just turning through it, okay. So this do don't go high, it always wants to go that way. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but that's where the low point was actually too far ahead. Yeah? Yeah. There. Yeah? That feeling there. I mean, that felt like I hit that further than... Yeah, it was a little bit left, but... That's something to work on. Yeah. Getting back, what does that feel like as a club to swing? It feels impact? nice. This feels like a nice head, like, shape. Yeah. It feels like... It's the middle ground. There's smaller wedge heads out there. There's, there's bigger ones. The Clevelands, I think, have always got... As if you took a, a spectrum of head size and shape. They sit pretty much middle ground like the Mizuno heads, the Mura heads, the Japanese heads always tend to be a little on the small side. It's folkies of similar sort of size into that. Yeah. Um, pings tend to be a little bit bigger in the head. They build a bit more forgiveness into them as well. But the Clevelands are, are, are just, uh, you know, they've been around a long time. Um, they, they're, they're very good in spin terms. Yeah. Felt nice. Yeah. Yeah, felt nice. Didn't get all the information there. I haven't got the club information to know where you were technically, but. Even that, just a little bit of ground. Just a little bit of ground. Yeah? Yeah, just a little bit of ground. But, but yeah, again, I mean, I not too bad. Three, three and a half down. Yeah? Okay. Nearly 9,000 spin. And it's only a partial shot. The, the easier you hit it, the less it spins. Yeah? yeah? The fuller you hit it, the more it spins. Again, they, I mean, it all feels very nice. What I want to do, just, just, just to validate, because you, you said that you, you, you enjoyed these wedges, mm. what I want to do is do a little bit of um, testing of the sole. Okay. We're going to hit some chip shots off a live board and see how it marks up okay. to, to give it validation. Yeah? Lovely. And that's what we'll do. Um, because I think, for me, working on the technique and the crispness of strike and getting those consistency of spin... Um, is probably the priority. Yeah. 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 Um, but what I will say, it's it's worth. I don't think they get too fancy here. No. <laughs> um, no, no, no. They're really. They're, um... they're they're reasonably wide in the sole. They've all got similar sole whips, haven't they? Mm -hmm. In terms of the bounce, it's almost. Do you know what they've really done? It, it's almost like they've they've giving you the same sole width and same bounce on all three clubs, but with change of loft. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess that's probably what they they're, have. They've not got too fancy. Yeah. You know, you look at someone who's got a set of focus and they'll have an F grind with a narrow sole in the gap wedge and then yeah, they'll, my brother has that, they'll, yeah. they'll have an S grind in the, in the mid, mid loft with a little bit of training edge relief and then they'll have less bounce on the high, on the lob wedge and they'll see three different sole designs according to the loft. But what, what they've done here, they've not got too fancy. They all look very, very similar. There is an element of a little bit more. That's certainly, that, that 52's definitely got a little bit less bounce. It increases as the loft goes up by a hair, but it's, it's not too fancy, yeah? So we're gonna just test the sole of it. Okay. See how it marks what's up. What's this? Huh? What's this thing? This is clever. Well, in the old days, this is how you used to test a um, lie angle for a set. Okay. It's a bit more sophisticated with, with stuff that we got, like TrackMan giving us average numbers on dynamic lines and so forth. And we often use a, a, a chalk line on the golf board to see the tilt element. We don't really use a lie board for what it's described as. We don't use it for lie. We use it to test bounce on wedges. Okay. So when you chip off of it, it indicates the sole, the strike point on the sole, tells you how effective that is as a club. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to go through the through the three of them. We go fifty-two first. Yep. And we're going to just hit. We're not going to go full tilt. We're just going to go some some of the shorter stuff. You know, chip shots. Okay. It gives Spring me a chips. feeling of of how effective that sole is and where your technique is. Do that again. How do you know? What's it doing on here? I'll, sh I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Cool. Quite a free action. There's, you know, like a... It's not, a, not what I see as a very wooden type method. It's quite a easy sort of flowing <laughs> move. So... I didn't touch on it, but what I did note from your iron numbers that the actual shaft plane is relatively shallow, and I actually thought that a flatter lie angle than standard is actually a good spec for you, fractionally flatter. Okay. So in other words, that angle there, yeah. because if you the one thing you'll say from front to back, and I'll show this for the camera actually, if we look at that as a strike point. Is that good? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So two things there is that it's a little bit on the hillside. So in an ideal world, this head could do with being a little bit flatter, but that follows suit with, with your iron spec as well. But from front to back, it's in a really good place. It's in the middle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love this club. I love hitting it. Yeah. Every time I get a chance to hit it, I will. Well, in being broad sole, they offer offer a bit more forgiveness for the average player okay. in being a bit broad, broader sole. Yeah. So similarly. On the irons, do you think they should be flatter as well, Ben? Yeah, just a hint. Okay. Just a hint. Yeah. Just based on your numbers. Okay. Yeah. And we, are you guys able to do that for me as well? That's what we do for a living, don't we? We build Fantastic. build clubs and adjust them. Mm -hmm. So again, keeping to the short, shorter chip shot. Yep. Quite a long arm swing. A good shot, nevertheless, but, but I see that more of a 40 to 50 yard pitch type of arm swing. But it's an interesting setup. You don't see many people set up to a wedge shot like yourself. What with the ball forward in my stance? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of coaches these days will say, don't get drop it way back in the stance because you're taking loft off, you're bringing angle into the shaft, you're offering the leading edge. You've got quite a neutral shaft angle, ball forward, and you've got a nice little brace down the left side where you've got your weight on your left side. So you work around your left side on the chip in, which is great. Yeah, nice. but you don't see many people set up. You see these guys who come in, 
it's almost like they're setting up to receive a, a ball from a fast bowler or something. Yeah. You know, it's like here, you know, ball back in the stance, digging yeah. the leading edge and so forth. But just touching on, on that, again, if you look at the strike point, it falls into the sole. Yes, it's towards the heel. Flat lie, this marking would go gravitate more to the centre. So it'd be interesting when I measure the lie on this. I want it to be more. Yeah, okay, I see what yeah, you mean. Yeah, do you understand? Yeah. Almost like if I was to try and correct that without changing the angle, I would hit the ball closer to me. But this is the one thing I was going to change. If I was going to chip, yes, there's a discussion of a slightly flatter lie running through the whole set anyway. But what I would change for you is the way you, a subtle change to the way you grip the club and how it influences the shaft angle for a chip shot. Play the same shot, but this time I want you to go down a good inch from the top of the club. Okay. Right? It brings you closer to it, and it makes that shaft go from that sort of angle to a little bit more vertical. Cool. Give it a go. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. A little bit closer and a little bit more taller. That's it. So you get that angle in the shaft. All right. Now, what should happen is the strike points just move slightly further across. Mm. Yeah? So you're using more central point on the sole. Makes sense. Makes total sense. Yeah? A lot of people, when they chip, they've got the lower hand position, but, the t but they're striking the heel end of it. It can be quite disruptive if you don't mm. get a good contact. When there's less resistance, if that handle is a bit taller, and I go... Personally, I go almost to the bottom of the grip, yeah? Yeah. Because what I'm looking for is that angle more vertical in the shaft angle and a little bit more up and down the line, yeah? Yeah. So my marking is just there. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Nice, like oh, a tip, love a tip, great yeah? tip. But what I am going to do, I think what you've got to remember, if we go for a set of wedges, custom wedges, we're, we're probably putting another 50, 750 on the, on the okay. price tag. Yeah. Whereas I think the irons you see as the, this is what I want to. I feel like they're going to be game changing for me. Take on board what I've said though. 100%. We check the bounce side of things. Yeah. We know they're okay. What I want to do though is check the lie angle because if these, I think they could do with just being a bit flat for you anyway. Okay. I like to think that it says carbon steel there. If it is, does if it says what it is on the tin, then they'll be adjustable in being a carbon steel head. Okay. Right. I can adjust them so basically get that strike point a little bit better for you. Oh, amazing. Yeah. How about that? The lob. That sounds brilliant. The lob wedge I hardly ever hit. No. I only ever hit it if I've got to go over a bunker or something. Well, that's a lot of people. It's their trouble club, isn't it? I like it out of the sand. If you get short Green sighted, side thick, rough, you yeah. want pace. Yeah. 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 So let's just see see where these lies are. Because I just fancy in general you need a flatter lie running through the set. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we'll wrap up things in What is really funny is how much I hate this club. This one is the one where I look at when I've got to hit that this distance, I'm like it, it's you know. It's designed it's it's a game improver set. It's not particularly refined in the pitching wedge. Mm. A bit cumbersome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've done me great and I've loved them and I've loved playing golf with them. Don't get me wrong, but I just feel like, yeah, new irons, game changing. And like, I just want to hit another one of those Mizunos. I just want to take, just go and take them out. They just felt so... Trixon, you mean? Yeah, sorry, the Trixons. Sorry. Yeah, these are just wonderful. Oh. <laughs> it did move, but... Uh... But to get you going, at least get these in a, a slightly better, better place. And still grip down on them. I'm also guaranteeing the loss that it says on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the yeah. other thing, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I have a bit of a gap between my pitch and my 
gap wedge. Well, that's, that's my other recommendation. I would rather, in conjunction with the changes we're making on the irons, I'd rather see 50, 55, 60, which ties in beautifully with the iron. Yeah, okay. At 52, the 52 yeah. and six, 56 are actually a fraction close together as opposed to bring the gap closer to the pitch and then offer a more an even keel aloft. Okay. 45, 50, 55, 60. And I can do that here. Wicked. Yeah? Love it. <clears throat> so it's bang on 60. It's that slightly flatter lie angle. The head hasn't broken. That's, that's amazing. It's always a yeah. bonus, isn't it? That's always a bonus. <laughs> yeah. But it's so funny, yeah, when I saw these, these YouTube reviews, which I know you, shouldn't, you should always take with a pinch of salt. I'm not going to buy stuff just by YouTube reviews, but they were, like, people were being like, these are great if you just need some wedges. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, I love to look. They, they serve a purpose, don't they? Yeah. They've got a little bit of tech on the face, and they've got like a micro milling, much in the same fashion as, say, a Cleveland or a Titleist or a Ping. Or a... Hit that same chip shot with that. With the hands down the club, yeah? Down the shaft, and I'd be very surprised if the strike point doesn't become a bit more central. Okay, no pressure on me then. No. Nope. Yeah, it is. Yeah? Yeah, I'll show you what it Show is. it to the camera. Yeah? There you go. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. And what you'll see in performance terms, you'll see a slightly softer flight on your chips. I mean, it felt like it popped up yeah. nicely then anyway, yeah. even off this, which is obviously... Yeah, because yeah. it's introducing a slightly different part of the sole. Yeah, it's just popping nicely off of a bloody piece of plastic. It's amazing. I can't do that out of the rough of, um, get it's pop feel like it's popping up that nicely. Yeah, that's pretty much. So I've flattened this to the same spec on the 52. Oh, amazing. But what I've also done is brought that loft down a little bit for you. Okay. So it's playing more that 50 d degree now. Okay. If we are going to make these changes on the iron, it'll, it'll create a slightly better gap in, in loft term. Amazing. Yeah? That's amazing. So there's that done. Thank you very much. You can test that again. Yeah. Do you remember where it was when we tested earlier? Do you want me to test the off, off the Astro now, yeah? Full shot? No, no. On the live board? Test, yeah, test it on the live board. Okay. See where the marking is. Yeah, I remember this was really close to the heel. Better? Yep, it's better. It's a bit further towards the face of the club, but it's like a good centimetre, centimetre and a half. Yeah. And it felt like it came out with a bit more fizz as well. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, it's less resistance. What you're picking up is it feels like it's got more speed for less resistance. And that's even better, that one. Yeah. That's wonderful. I get a lot of abuse for these clubs, my Costco clubs. 
Well, well they do. they're not light, you could cover it up with lead tape and you could say you've got the most expensive wedges, but they've been fine-tuned for weight, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's, a so it's, it's taking off, it's a softer effect. Yeah. Yeah? You can see the mark yeah. from where it was yeah. before to where yeah. it is now. Yeah. And what I've done here, I've put 55 on here. So it's okay. now 50, 55, 60. Brilliant, thank you. If we make the changes on the wedges, I'm oh, sorry, on the irons, yeah. then that's going to drop into your bag. Amazing. Yeah? Love All it. right. Thank you very much. So yeah, I, I would say, look, the bottom line is when you are discerning enough, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory sense, but when you get to a point of saying, I'm ready for some specialist wedges yeah. to tie them with this nice change on the irons, you know where we are. I know exactly where you are. We've I mean, made, I've loved this made place. changes, it's yeah, but we've made the changes that work, make these work better. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. And take on board what I said on that fuller, you know, when you're hitting those three quarter, you get the feeling of, of that getting out of the way, practice it off a turf and, yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't don't let it get that way. Yeah, you want. So you you want that feeling of over it, cover it, ball yeah. driven forward, nice contact with the ball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, got it. All right. So the only bit that we need to do is discuss a grip type and size. Okay. And then we'll go, and that that will wrap it up. Wicked. All right. So yeah, as as. I don't know, get, get the other way around so we can see it on the camera here. Okay. But um, yeah, so you, what you're looking for is touching there without too much digging. You don't want big gaps. If you're using a very thick grip, you'd have a, more the look of, let's say, let's say if it looked a bit more like that. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Where there's a spacing. Um, in terms of profile of grip, so you can get to grips that are a little bit less taper, mm -hmm. some with a stronger taper. This is one of the traditional grips with a slightly stronger taper, so it, it, it gets thinner quicker. Yep. And there's a lot of modern grips where there's less taper, comes across as thicker in the other hand. I always put it down to the fact, what, where's someone's tendencies? Is your tendency to miss it left with a over rotation, I think the way I look at it, I, I think in general it's more leave the face open. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's keep to a more traditional profile. That's probably what I've always used as well, right? So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And then after that, it, it, it's what grip type. It becomes quite subjective because the feels vary from grip to grip. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What I've given you in terms of testing on size is a traditional Golf Pride Tour Velvet. Biggest selling grip worldwide. No nonsense. Okay. Smoothish texture, not too busy. But obviously, we've got a lot of grips. Okay, all yeah. right. Oh, God, there are a lot of grips. <laughs> yeah. So we know in size terms, that's our size. That's a very traditional grip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More of the other end of the spectrum here is a, a much softer, tackier modern grip comes with slightly less taper than that one mm -hmm. i did say that i'd rather stick to the traditional taper, taper yeah. but that, that gives you an idea of what's out there a little bit softer tackier feeling but the one grip that i think is maybe in working on this grip that we described yeah here's the same taper as the two of velvet mm -hmm. it's another golf pride it's the multi-compound align now what's different about that is this ridge at the back yeah i said to you about trying to find that feeling through those two middle knuckles yeah yeah that's quite a nice feature for the fun mark but also more importantly with that ridge at the back that gives you that feeling of that ridge running on the fingers, which naturally gets the club into the fingers rather than into the palm. Yours was a bit more of that sort of look. I want that more of that look. So 
So it naturally gets the dexterity in that right hand. I really like this grip. I really like it. Yeah? Yep. Slightly more textured, but, but it's a good all-weather grip. In other words, it's a combination of corded section, firmer section at the top in the glove hand, slightly softer feeling in the, in the non-glove hand. Very popular worldwide. A lot of players on the tour, your Rory's and, and, and Victor's, although they don't have the align feature on it, the multi-compound is a popular grip. But it has got the taper that I think is the better taper for you. I right, love that one, perfect. Yeah, yep. so we're wrong with that, but yep. it's only with one layer of tape based on hand size. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Perfect. And that concludes brilliant. it. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mark. You all right? Thank you. That was brilliant. I love that. That was great fun. Good.